Hello, my name is Don Edwards. I'm the worldwide tech leader for identity at Amazon Web Services. In this video, I will show you the end-to-end -end configuration steps for giving your developers access to Amazon Code Whisperer Professional using Octo Workforce Identity Cloud and AWS IAM Identity Center. I will begin by giving you a brief introduction to the three main components I will be working with, Amazon Code Whisperer, AWS IAM Identity Center, and Octo Workforce Identity Cloud. Next, I will give you a high-level overview of the AWS account structure I am working with, as well as the steps involved in connecting the components. Then, I will demonstrate the end-to-end -end configuration process. Finally, I will give you some resources you can use to get started working with Code Whisperer on your own. First, let's introduce Amazon Code Whisperer. Code Whisperer is a machine learning driven service that integrates directly into a developer's favorite development tools. Code Whisperer makes context driven suggestions that can accelerate application development and free up developers to focus on application functionality instead of language mechanics and syntax. As Code Whisperer makes suggestions, it detects when the suggestion may be similar to particular open source training data and can mark it with repository and licensing information. Code Whisperer also can scan your code for security vulnerabilities, AWS security standards, best practices, and more. During the Code Whisperer preview, we ran a productivity challenge, and participants who used Amazon Code Whisperer were 27% more likely to complete tasks successfully, and did so an average of 57% faster than those who did not use Code Whisperer. The professional tier of Amazon Code Whisperer is integrated with AWS IAM Identity Center for access provisioning. We created Identity Center to be the front door to your organization, centralizing workforce identity and access management as your organization grows to hundreds or even thousands of AWS accounts, while still giving you fine-grained control over who can access your accounts, applications, and resources. Identity Center can be deployed alongside your existing identity and access management solutions with no impact to how your users work with AWS accounts today. AWS customers commonly configure IAM Identity Center to use an external identity provider, such as Okta Workforce Identity Cloud, as a primary workforce identity store and authentication service. Okta's service is itself built on AWS with a modern elastic architecture designed for scale and resiliency. Combining Okta with Identity Center gives you all of the benefits of Okta's sophisticated, centralized identity management capabilities including integration with human capital management systems, plus fine-grained control over your AWS accounts, applications, and resources at scale and with a single configuration point. Let's take a quick look at the authentication flow that your developers will experience once they have Code Whisperer, Identity Center, and Okta fully integrated. Most developers today use some kind of Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, while writing code. Amazon Code Whisperer supports several IDEs, like Visual Studio Code, JetBrains, and our very own web-based IDE, AWS Cloud9. The IDE I am using today is Visual Studio Code. AWS provides a Code Whisperer plugin to Visual Studio Code as part of the AWS Toolkit extension, which also includes support for Amazon Code Catalyst, AWS Lambda, and other AWS services. After setting up the Code Whisperer plugin to work with Identity Center, a developer's IDE will automatically open a browser for authentication through Okta, which authorizes the Code Whisperer session through Identity Center. Once they are authenticated, the developer is up and running with their IDE ready to write code. Now, before we jump into the configuration steps, let's take a look at the multi account AWS environment I'm using and talk about some of the best practices for configuring IAM Identity Center and Code Whisperer. AWS recommends that all customers going forward segment their workloads and resources into multiple AWS accounts grouped together according to purpose, phase of development, and other categories useful for governance. Using multiple AWS accounts to help isolate and manage your business applications and data can help you optimize across most of the AWS well-architected pillars, including operational excellence, security, reliability, and cost optimization. 
This is a representation of the multi-account structure built out in my demo environment. While the full topic of designing your multi-account structure is outside the scope of this video, I do want to highlight one important best practice for working with Identity Center, delegating administration to a dedicated Identity Management AWS account. Let's focus on the two AWS accounts that will be involved in configuring access to Code Whisperer. The top-level organization management account and a dedicated account for identity management functions. Since IAM Identity Center is designed to provision workforce access to all of the accounts in an AWS organization, it must first be enabled in the organization management account. The management account contains some of the most sensitive configurations and governance functions in your environment, so you really want to limit the number of people who can access it. To that end, the first thing we will do after enabling Identity Center in the Organization Management account is to delegate administration to the Identity Management account. All further configuration will happen there. Next, we will configure Identity Center to use Okta Workforce Identity Cloud as its identity provider. The first step is to establish a SAML trust relationship between the two by exchanging certificates and other configuration data. Then we will enable Okta to push user and group information to Identity Center for use in access provisioning. Once users and groups have had a chance to populate in Identity Center, we will set up Code Whisperer in the same account and assign permissions to the users who are likely to be writing code. Now that you have a high level idea of the configuration steps, let's jump right into the demonstration. Our first task is to enable Identity Center. To do that, we'll log into the Organization Management account with a user that has permissions to set up Identity Center. Always remember to have multi-factor authentication enabled for any user that has administrative rights. Once I'm in the management account, I'll go into Identity Center and click Enable. This brings us to the Identity Center dashboard. Now that we have Identity Center enabled in the Organization Management account, we'll go to the Settings menu, which is where you can find the option to delegate administration to another account in your organization. Navigate to the Management tab, and there you can see the Delegated Administrator option. Click Register Account, and this gives you a view of the accounts in your organization. I have grouped the accounts in my organization according to the best practices laid out in the white paper Organizing your AWS environment using multiple accounts. I'll provide a link to that white paper in the show notes. The dedicated account I created for identity management falls under the infrastructure and production OUs in my organization. Now that I have selected the account, I'll scroll down to the bottom and click register account. Now that we have done the initial configuration of Identity Center, we can configure it to use Okta Workforce Identity Cloud as its external identity provider. To do that, we will log out of the Organization Management account and log into the Identity Management account, again with a user that has permissions to configure Identity Center. Again, here is the Identity Center dashboard. To set up an external identity provider, we'll select Choose Your Identity Source. That brings us back to the settings screen, where when you scroll down, you can see that the identity source is currently Identity Center's native directory store. Since we want to use an external identity provider, we'll go to the Actions dropdown and select Change Identity Source. This gives us three options. Since we are using an external identity provider, we will select External Identity Provider. As we mentioned before, using an external identity provider requires that we set up a SAML trust relationship between Identity Center and the external identity provider. This screen gives you all the information you need to establish that trust. Since we will need to exchange several different configuration items between Identity Center and the external identity provider, it helps to copy all the configuration items into a text document.
You can see also the same page is used to configure Identity Center with configuration items that we will get from Okta. Now let's switch over to Okta. We'll log into Okta with an administrator user that has permissions to define new applications. Okta views Identity Center as an application. So we'll navigate to the Applications menu, where we can create an app integration manually or use one of Okta's predefined applications in their app catalog. Since AWS has a strong partner relationship with Okta, they have a predefined app configuration for Identity Center and other AWS services. In the search bar, simply type AWS, and Identity Center shows up at the top of the results. Select Identity Center, click Add Integration, and name the application something meaningful. I'm demonstrating Code Whisperer integration, so I'll name this Code Whisperer Demo AWS IAM Identity Center. Click Done. And the application is defined. Now we need to establish the Okta side of this trust relationship. So we'll click on the Sign On tab. Click Edit on Settings. and scroll down to find the metadata that Identity Center needs to establish the trust with Okta. Okta provides all the details that Identity Center needs through the metadata URL, so you can configure Identity Center by downloading the metadata and adding it to Identity Center, but since this is a demo, I want to show you the details of what information is exchanged. So just like we did for Identity Center, we will copy the configuration items and put them into our text document. Two of the configuration items that Identity Center needs are the Okta sign-in URL and the Okta issuer URL. Identity Center also needs the signing certificate that Okta uses to establish the SAML trust. We'll download that and upload it to Identity Center in a few minutes. If we keep scrolling down, we will find the fields where we need to enter the configuration items we copied from Identity Center, the ACS URL and the issuer URL. Now that the SAML configuration is completed on the Okta side, let's go back to Identity Center and enter the configuration items we copied from Okta. Identity Center needs the sign-in URL, and the issuer URL. as well as the certificate that we downloaded from Okta. Scroll down to the bottom and click Next. Make sure that you review the consequences of the changes you're making by changing your identity source. Type accept to confirm that you understand the consequences and click change identity source.
Now that we have the trust relationship established between Okta and Identity Center, we need to enable automatic provisioning of user and group information from Okta to Identity Center. To do that, we click Enable on Automatic Provisioning. Identity Center uses an open standard protocol called System for Cross-Domain Identity Management, or SCIM for short, to automate exchange of user identity information from the identity provider. To do that, Okta needs some additional configuration items the SKIM endpoint, and the access token it uses to authenticate. One important detail specific to the Okta configuration is that it expects the SKIM endpoint not to have a following forward slash. So go ahead and remove that following slash. Next, we will show the access token and copy it to the clipboard. This access token gives Okta privileged access into Identity Center, so we will not paste it into the text document but instead we'll go directly back over to Okta and enter it into the configuration there. We click on the provisioning tab and then click configure API integration. Select the checkbox and paste in the API token. Then we will enter the base URL. Remember again to make sure there is no trailing slash. Click Save, and now Okta has everything it needs to replicate users and groups to Identity Center. Since Okta is the identity source of truth, we want it to be able to create users, update user attributes, and to deactivate users. Click Save. And now we're ready to give users and groups access to Identity Center. Scrolling down on the same screen, you can view and modify which user attributes are replicated to Identity Center. Now let's take a quick look at the users and groups we already have defined in Okta. I have 11 users defined, my administrator user, as well as 10 less privileged users. Each of those users is a member of one of five groups that I've defined for provisioning access to AWS. You can see that I have named the groups with a prefix of AWS underscore. This will come in handy in provisioning access later on. If we look at the profile details of one particular user, you will see that this user, like all these users, has a cost-centered attribute defined. When these user profiles are replicated to Identity Center, attributes like the cost center will be replicated over. Before these users will be able to use Identity Center and Code Whisperer, we have two more actions to perform. The first is to assign users access to Identity Center. We click on the Assignments tab, click on the Assign dropdown button, and click Assign to Groups. Here you can see all of the groups that are defined in Okta, and I can easily filter that list by entering the AWS underscore prefix that I added to all of the groups. I want to allow all of these groups to use Identity Center, even though not all of them will be using Code Whisperer. So I click Assign on the Core Network Admins group, and it gives me an option to define group attributes that will override attributes defined on the users themselves. Since I have not defined a department attribute for any of my users, I will do that here. These attributes can be used for several purposes within Identity Center and across AWS services. And although Code Whisperer does not today use them, I want to go ahead and configure them now for future use. Now that all five groups have been assigned to Access Identity Center, I'll go up to the Push Groups tab, which is where we tell Okta which groups and users to replicate to Identity Center. So we click Push Groups, and because we put a prefix on our AWS groups, we can use the Find Groups by Rule option to tell Okta that it should replicate any group 
that begins with the AWS underscore prefix. Using a replication rule like this reduces administrative overhead in the future. After waiting a short period of time for the replication to occur, we can go back to Identity Center, click Refresh on Groups, and we can see that the groups of users have been replicated over. And then if we go into Users, and again click Refresh, we can select one of our users, and see that both the cost center and department attributes were replicated along with them. CodeWhisper is an authenticated service, and some development teams may want an extended session length so they aren't required to re-authenticate every few hours. Session duration for CodeWhisper is affected by both the maximum session length within Identity Center and the maximum session length within your identity provider. To configure session duration in Identity Center, go to the Settings tab, click on Authentication, and click Configure. The default duration is 8 hours, but it can be extended to as long as 7 days. Back over in Okta, go to the Security tab, Go to Global Session Policy and either edit the default rule or create a new rule where you can define the maximum Okta session lifetime. Session lifetimes within Okta may be affected by other configurations as well. Refer to the Okta documentation for more details. Now that we have Identity Center and the external identity provider completely configured, we can set up Code Whisperer. To do that, we log into the Identity Management account. Code Whisperer must be set up in the same account as Identity Center. You can find Code Whisperer under the Developer Tools Services list. Click Get Started, and Code Whisperer shows you all the users and groups defined in Identity Center. Now that Identity Center is set up with its identity source, I'm granting the AWS Developers Group access to Code Whisperer. As we scroll down, you can see pricing and cost estimates, as well as some advanced configuration settings. Click Set up Code Whisperer, and my developers now have access. Now I can switch over to my development environment. As I mentioned before, I'm using Visual Studio Code for this demo. The plugin for Visual Studio is included in the AWS Toolkit extension, so I'll navigate to Extensions, search for Code Whisperer, and click Install on the AWS Toolkit. After it's installed, I'll click on the AWS icon that appears. Click Connect to AWS to get started. And click on Code Whisperer. When I scroll down, I have two authentication options. AWS Builder ID and the one I'll use today, IAM Identity Center. The Code Whisperer plugin needs to know the Identity Center starting URL, which we copied to the text file during our configuration. Enter the starting URL. Select the region where we configured Code Whisperer. And click Sign In. The Code Whisperer plugin generates an authorization code that we need to copy and enter into the authorization screen. Paste the code, click Next. And the browser is redirected to Okta. 
will log in as one of the members of the AWS underscore developers group. And click allow access. When we go back to Visual Studio Code, it confirms that Code Whisperer is completely set up. Now we'll create a new Python file. and give a sample of what Code Whisperer can do. When I start to define a Python function for parsing a comma-separated value file, Code Whisperer starts making suggestions on how to write the body of that function. I'm not typing anything here. I'm simply accepting the recommendations that Code Whisperer gives me. Understand that these are only suggestions, and the developer is still responsible for making sure that the code is effective and secure. Now that you have a feel for the process of setting up access to Code Whisperer Professional, let me point you to some resources that can help you put into practice what you have learned. First, I would encourage you to dive into the features and benefits of using Amazon Code Whisperer. The leftmost QR code will take you directly to the resources you need to get hands-on with Code Whisperer quickly. The middle QR code will take you to Okta's website where you can sign up for a trial or a developer account of Workforce Identity Cloud. The QR code on the right leads to a YouTube video that walks you through creating your first app with Code Whisperer. In this video, I introduced you to Amazon Code Whisperer Professional, AWS IAM Identity Center, and Okta Workforce Identity Cloud. We walk through the architecture and workflow of how those three services work together to get your developers up and running quickly with Code Whisperer's code suggestion and analysis tools. Then, I demonstrated all of the steps needed for the end to end configuration of Code Whisperer, Identity Center, and Okta. Thank you for watching, and I wish you the best in your journey with Code Whisperer.